Hey, this is Winston Bennett. Hey, today we're talking about leading, how to lead and manage people. And this is going to be part three. In our last video, we talked about leading and managing people uh, the Bettino way. That was my coach, Rick Bettino. And I want to elongate that a little bit because Coach Bettino had so many facets of his leadership style that I would like to talk about. Uh, one of the things that Coach Bettino would have us do as I mentioned, we would get in early in the morning about 6, 8, 6 a.m. and play basketball. It was really get vigorous exercise from 6 to 6.30. 6 to 6.30, then from 6.30 to about 7, we would go into our offices and write notes to our recruits. And about 7, the first group of players, our players would come in in groups of threes that we would have them in what's called individual instruction getting up 250 to 500 shots per session. So that means it was a vigorous workout. And we're talking about, again, how do we lead people? So in his format, he knew in order to win a championship, I had to elevate the people that were on the team, okay? First of all, I wanna lead with integrity. Second of all, I wanna find the best players that I possibly can to join my team. And not only the best players, but the hardest working players with talent. So when you're going out and you're looking for talent for your banking team, okay? If you're looking for talent, I don't care if it's for your, uh, uh, your, your manufacturing team, you wanna look for people with talent, with uh, intelligentsia. If you can find someone with some intelligence that's willing to work hard and willing to go to the next level, that's hungry. I like what Les Brown said, you gotta be hungry. You're looking for people that have a hunger to get better and to be the best, to extract the best that uh, the coach can. And that's what Coach Bettino would do. He would be hard on you, but the reason he was hard on you was so that you can be the best possible assistant coach or the best possible player that you possibly can. So look at his coaching tree. You know what I'm saying? He's got so many uh, ex-assistant coaches that are coaches now. He had Jim O'Brien, who was my upline when I was at Kentucky. It was Coach Patino. Jim O'Brien was his top assistant. He had Dale Ray Brooks, and then somewhere I was there. And then under us was uh, Frank Vogel, who was the video co coordinator, co coordinator. Talk about Frank Vogel. Started as a video guy, you know, the third or fourth coach on our staff. Now he has coached the Lakers and won a championship with LeBron James. I just heard this year where he just signed on at Phoenix. Okay, so he's going to have Kevin Durant, uh, Devin Booker, former Kentucky player. Uh, uh, so he's going to have some great talent to coach, man. And he started as a video coordinator. What does that tell you? Never despise the day of small beginnings. I don't care if you start out on the phone as a telemarketer. It doesn't mean that you can't reach the CEO office. Don't despise where you are starting. I don't care if you start in the back of the classroom. You can end up teaching the class, being the professor of the class. It is possible. There are many examples of it. Let me tell you. Now, you would think, given my heritage as having, having been a player in the NBA, I coached in the NBA with the Boston Celtics, but it gets back to a thing called integrity. You got to have integrity. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how hard you work. Your, your ability will get you in the door. Your talent will get you in the door, but your integrity will keep you in the door. You know what I'm saying? So when I look back on some of the experience I had, Frank Vogel was certainly not a better coach than me. He certainly didn't play in the NBA like I had played, but his integrity was so serene. He didn't get mixed up in, in women and any all these other things that you could possibly get mixed up in. He stayed the course. He worked that thing with blinders on. As he was looking at those film sessions, man, I assumed that he was putting himself uh, as being a head coach one day, okay? So Frank Vogel, even though I was Coach Patino's assistant, I went with him to the Boston Celtics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but wasn't focused, wasn't focused. So ended up uh, becoming a head coach on the collegiate level. Frank Vogel moves up. When Coach Patino leaves Boston, Jim O'Brien, his head assistant, moves up as the head for the Boston Celtics. Frank Vogel is his assistant now. So when Jim O'Brien steps down for the Boston Celtics, 
uh, they ended up being with the Indiana Pacers. Then Frank Vogel becomes the head coach of the Pacers and then the rest is history. So that's how life works. That's why you got to work to the nth degree every moment, every opportunity that you have. Don't be so focused on where you are thinking that's where you are going to be for a lifetime because things happen in life. People get sick. People make bad decisions. And then all of a sudden you get catapulted in the C CEO position all because all along the way you had your head down, you was learning everything that you possibly could, you was being the best person you possibly could, learning everything you could, but also learning from what others, their mistakes. You know, two ways we learn. We learn from ourselves, but we also, if we would take note, we'll learn from the mistakes of others. I'd rather learn from the mistakes of others than making those mistakes myself. You hear what I'm saying? So Coach Patino, you know, he had a very focused plan of attack when it came to managing people. He was hard on you. You had to be there at 6 a.m. You had to work throughout the day and most times throughout the night before you went home for the night, which involved what? It involved in individual instruction all throughout the day because you had guys coming in in groups of threes between their classes doing a 45 minute session of individual instruction. That's all the NCAA would allow us to have at that time. We're talking back in the nineties, you know, so we would take them man through a vigorous shooting session, a ball handling session, mostly shooting, getting up hundreds of, hundreds of shots during that 45 minute period. What happened over the course of getting up all those shots three times a week, Man, those guys became better shooters when they got in games, okay? How does that relate to what you do as a computer analyst? How does that relate to what you do as an investment person? You know, take some of these things that I'm telling you that we did in basketball, incorporate it into what you do, okay? So Coach Patino was hard. I didn't like it, but I knew the results, if I could stick it out, what that could eventually help me to be, which is a head coach, and that is exactly what happened. So I was only under Coach Patino for three years, three years at the University of Kentucky, a short spell with the Boston Celtics. Then I got a head coaching job at Kentucky State. I could start to implement and put in some of the things that I learned from him and some of the other coaches, Lenny Wilkins, that I learned from. And, you know, in actuality, every coach that I play for, I'm sure there's some part of them in me when it came to coaching and learning how to manage and lead people. As you go through that foray of leading people, one thing you understand is, and I, I said this in one of the other videos, you got to learn the right buttons to push with people. Every player that we had on that Kentucky team had a different button that needed to be pushed. Antoine Walker, you had to be hard on him. You had to be in his face because if you gave him an inch, he'd take a mile. Jeff Shepard, not so much. Jeff Shepard was a hard worker hard worker. He was conscientious. He was going to do what you told him to do when you told him to do it. He was going to run through a wall for you. So what you had to do with Jeff Shepard was that you had to instill confidence in him. You couldn't be so hard on him that you would uh, distill his confidence. Okay. You had to instill confidence in Jeff where, where uh, uh, Antoine Walker was oozing with confidence. He had too much confidence. He was self-absorbed. Self you had to take his confidence away, break him down like a, a, a captain in the army breaks you down. You know, you had to get under his skin, make him mad so that he would go to the nth level of his talent because he was just oozing with talent. The way he handled that ball, the way he could pass, man, he could even step out and shoot threes. He could do it all. Yeah, he could do it all. And he knew he could do it all. That's the point. He knew he could do it all. He knew how great he was. And those are the time, those are the kind you got to watch out for that think they're great. You know, they got great talent. They know they got great talent. Those are the ones that try to take advantage of you as a leader. You know, you got to watch them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Coach Patino, again, he was one that dotted every I, crossed every T. He left nothing to chance. Nothing. He had us as assistant coaches watching film from day to night, watching every nuance of what the uh, enemy was doing, what our opponents was doing, whether the player wanted to go right, whether he wanted to go left, how many times during the course of the game would he do that? You know, whether he was a back to the basket player shooting over his left shoulder or his right shoulder, you know what I'm saying? How effective was his, what was his shooting percentage? You know, he wanted to know every iota 
On the defensive side, he wanted to know how many stops we got in the man-to-man, -man, how many stops we got in the 2-3 zone, how many stops did we get in our black-white press, how many times did the team score on us, you know, how many times were we successful. He wanted everything charted. Now, they call that today analytics in the NBA. You know, it's a very analytic league. So in essence, what he's saying was you got to document your success. You got to make note on what's what's been successful successful for your people and what's been unsuccessful. You got to know that. Leave nothing to chance. OK, that's what he told me, taught me. Leave nothing to chance. Chart everything. Grade everything. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, you've got some type of booklet on what success looks like for your team. If you're not charting your successes and your failures, then you don't know what success looks like. And you've got to have a vivid picture of what success looks like for your team. All right, so this is video three, man. We'll keep them coming. Uh, we're just trying to help, okay? Peace.